Miguelito this morning, and then we're heading out to Via Betulia, which I'm super excited to see. A lot of the varieties are the ones that Felipe is planting at Hardinas, so striper bone and uh, papayo and uh, the yellow whoosh whoosh and the Maragasia, which is um, a big deal for us because we're the only people right now that have that variety anywhere. Uh, so we bought all that from Via Betulia. But just to check out what Luis Sanibal is doing to find these varieties and like why he's finding them and that's just like a good mindset for a lot of farmers to have. Down here searching for high end, what the high end looks like and I think that uh, Via Betulia is a big part of that. Juan, you ready? I'm ready, man. All right. So we made it to Via Betulia. Man, it's been a while since I've been back to Wheeler, but this is a beautiful, beautiful area. It looks manufactured. So it feels really great to be back, but it feels especially good to be at Luis Anibal's farm. And already we tried a, a geisha. He's calling geisha queen. It's a variety that he isolated from geisha he already had planted that had a larger seed. And he just brewed us a quick pour over. It was exceptionally good. Uh, like Meyer, lemon, and jasmine, and very sweet. just crazy like how how does one farm have so many varieties it makes it makes you wonder if you know it's not this particular farm but it's just his mindset of looking for unique varieties so we're gonna cup he built a cupping lab and he's really proud of it and so he wants us to cup some of the new varieties and give him feedback on them um, I'm excited to try them so it kind of feels like we found the jackpot in meeting Luis he's a pretty pretty exceptional farmer It's just like striking me, visiting a lot of different farms that are producing consistently 88 to 90 plus coffees by design. They're like the new high end of coffee does not look like what we thought it looked like in terms of the cherry, right? 10 years ago, we would imagine riper, redder, cleaner, brighter cherries. The new high end is controlling the fermentation and you're ending up with cherries like this. 10 years ago, fermentation in coffee just meant soaking the bean to get the fruit off of it. It was functional, that was it. But fermentation, as we know from lots of amazing beverages, beer and wine and spirits, is where you get the complexity and the interesting flavors. And so like that age has come in coffee. Controlled fermentation, so you're getting flavors that just were unthinkable 10 years ago. It's not even, not, not even 10 years ago, you know, like three or four years ago. Luis Anibal is doing all anaerobic fermentation, either anaerobic or lactic. Lactic is controlled temperature range. Uh, version of anaerobic or CM uh, and then it's all getting floated before and after fermentation and then it's getting hand sorted again. They're dealing with very small amounts of coffee like a vineyard would like just small amounts of grapes at a time not like truckloads as the default unit so it definitely looks different the high end of the high end of coffee as it's emerging so it's really exciting to see it. This is Don Luis's Maragasia, um, this plot here. He has about 1,700 trees, and um, as of now, we've bought uh, all of that. For now, uh, and hopefully not for long, we're the only roaster that has this variety in the world. Uh, and we didn't buy it just because it's, um, you know, a limited variety. This is one of my favorite coffees 
that we had last year when we first purchased it. Uh, it's a really, really special fruity floral combination of Margot Hipe, which, you know, like strong, elegant florals and geisha with like maybe more fruit and punchy tropical notes. This also is like a good example of the high end of coffee. Like one of the things that comes into my mind, right, is like I've always said the high end as we think of it now of coffee is not the same for farmers in terms of like their livelihood as the high end of whiskey and wine. If you, you know, go to a distillery or a vineyard or a brewery that you love, that you think of as like one of the best in the world, uh, you expect to like show up to like a place that's well established, that seems like it has like a firm financial foundation and like there's basic elements of like having a good life. Uh, what we've really done is just make farmers like slightly less poor. With like these trees here, so 1,700 trees that are producing about a kilogram and a half per year, you know, that's only 30 bags worth of coffee. You know, that coffee is getting sold for like, I think we're buying it for like 20, $30 a pound. On those 30 bags, he's making the equivalent of what a normal farmer would make uh, on 300 bags, potentially. That's also the new high end of coffee. I mean, he, this is like, aside from like the passion that obviously drives him, this is a great financial footing for a farmer. It, it feels like coffees like this are gonna put them in a place where they're like, their passions line up with their needs, right? That's what we really want, like for coffee, is like someone who's as passionate as him. Those passions, to line up like what we would expect if we fully realized our passions in life and did the best work that we could in an artisan industry, we would expect that our, our needs would be met. And that's not been the case with farmers, but with, with this sort of coffee, that's, uh, that's fallen into place a lot more. So this is great to see. It's been a long, long trip to get here, both literally and metaphorically. So it's uh, really exciting to see this coffee.